Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Figured out what the problem was with the DX Commander. It wasn't the DX Commander after all, it was bad coax, but if you've been following along with the channel, you kind of know that's been happening all along. Here is what we got. So we got uh, one spot there, this one was pretty clean. The, the rodents apparently don't like Teflon. And then this spot here, they started chewing, and then this spot here, they, they started chewing a little bit less. It is what it is, folks. I gotta cut, well, I already did cut this much out, but now I gotta splice back in a bunch of coax. All right, so I have this very expensive tool from DX Engineering. Ugh. And it comes with instructions. The coaxial cable stripping tool DXE0, DXE UT8213. There will be a link in the description down below for this one. So cut the coax flat, insert it into the first cut side which is labeled on the tool right there. It says first cut, so you stick it in there. Turn it clockwise to make the first cut. First cut's complete, flip it over, stick it back in, turn it again, and you should wind up with a beautiful cable just like that. Let's try it. Okay, so I have a piece of RG213, and this is also from DX Engineering. I am going to put it into the side marked first cut as described in the instructions. All right, so there we go. That's the first cut, and it gives us just the coaxial, well, coax is single outer, makes co, two. It gives us the center conductor pin. So push it in, start twisting until it gets to the twist. It, it'll bottom out, it'll stop, all your mess will stop coming out, and you're good to go. The tool comes from the factory pre-sized to get you where you need to get. Let's get rid of all of that copper splinters in my fingers now. All right, and then we do the second cut side. So there's the first cut side, so there's the second cut side. And there is a hole in the center. That's a serious center conductor. We do the same thing, twist it. until it stops twisting, and now we've got perfect inner and outer, and distance and spacing and all, everything. Next up, we need a connector. And the way these are designed, you can see all the way through to my green desk mat, if I get it lined up just right. So the center conductor needs to go in there, and then we need to solder it in place. I'm gonna put this on without making any changes first. Well, let me take this piece out. Connector unscrews. Put this on first. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm not gonna make any changes at all from this point, and we're gonna go on, and then we're gonna start screwing this thing down. And you can see the shield coming through the center part there, and then this connector here is threaded. I also got these connectors from DX Engineering. And you can see the center conductor starting to pop up through the center there, like a good center conductor should. And then I am out of the ability to twist that. So that is done. Where are my instructions? Where did they go? There they are. I'm gonna take the instructions, put them back around the tool. The tool does come with this little carrying case. I don't know what it is. You gotta have some strong, pain-free hands in order to get that part done. Put that off to the side. And next, we need to solder the end. I have been told by my Elmer not to put solder in here. It's not necessary. That's just so you can see that you've made a good solid connection there and then this part here is threaded on the inside so that you can get a hold of the jacket. Flip this over to make it more conducive for me to solder. And I will get my solder and I will get my soldering iron. And we'll put a little bit of solder 
on the iron to make a good connection. And then there's a lot of mass there that I need to heat up. And you'll see it wick into the center of the connection there as it finds itself some nice tasty copper to go after. And that looks good to me. What you really want to work on is not getting any solder on the outside of that center pin. Because if you do, then it'll be hard to insert it into your radio or into your tuner or into another piece of coax or whatnot. And if you are one of those belts and suspenders types, you can put some solder inside those, those little windows there to make a better connection. I'm just going on what I was told. If you have a better way of doing it, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. So what I need now is I need a 10 foot jumper to get to the broken section of the coax. I'm gonna measure that out. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna try with a different tool that I got off of Amazon and see if it's any harder or any easier. This tool was $12 on Amazon. There is a link in the description below and I am taking it out of the package for the first time as you can see. So you get to ham along with me while I figure out how this thing, <laughs> if, this thing works. The goal of this one here is you can squeeze it to open it. There should be two blades in there, which there are. Clamp it down on your cable, spin it around your finger. Well, spin it around the cable with your finger. There is a hex key on the bottom. These things work great for Cat5 cables. So we'll see if they work great for this. So we need to, where do we stop putting it in? There's a notch in the blade for your center conductor, and I can always trim off more. Let's try starting there. And I didn't put a whole lot of pressure on it, I just did enough to seat it, and then we want to turn clockwise. We've got some leverage action going on, so it's not as hard. There's still some resistance there. Let's see if that was enough to get me anywhere. So that comes off. And then that comes off, and I've lost all of my jacket in there, which should be fine, because that should have gone all the way down to the center conductor, and I'm touching it up with a utility knife. And it didn't go through the second part of the jacket there. I'm gonna keep, keep at it. A little bit of wiggling got that done. Now I need to add a pair of pliers to the mix. And we got that part off, and then this part of the jacket should be cut all the way through. So, not as pretty. Oh, they come individually wrapped with their own candy packs. Let's see if it did the thing. Okay, so now we're all the way down. We've got some shield in the shield holes. We've got some center conductor in the center conductor holes. Now I'm gonna cut this because there's more sticking out than there should be. And that's not the new tool's fault, that's my fault. And that just popped off, excellent. So we can get down there and inspect what our thing looks like. So what it looks like to me is that it's actually too far and that's why this popped off. Check the other end of the cable. Yep, and that's nice and flush, so we've got to get that flush on this end. All right, so I was able to push the plastic piece back down inside of the metal collar there. And we're just starting to get to push proud, and we do still have plenty of wire in there. I'm gonna pull out my multimeter, since I have both ends of the cable here, I'm gonna give it a test. Right there, into beep mode. We've got both ends of our cable here, and not a whole lot of hands, there's some flux on there I need to clean off. Okay, so that's center to center, that's working. And that's shield to shield, that's working. So the cable is tested good and clean. And we can also look for an insertion loss test 
on our Nano VNA if we really want to go crazy with it. I have a video about doing that linked up there if you want to see that. But that means this cable needs to be finished soldering like we did before, and then we can get it put into place. All right, folks, there you go. I have two ends put on my coax cable. I'm gonna put that back together and get back on the air with it. We have fixed the problem with the DX Commander. <laughs> it says DX Engineering that way, and then you have to flip it this way. You can't just roll it over, because it's upside down. Anyway, um, this one, like I said, was about $65. This one here was about $12 on Amazon. So DX Engineering versus Amazon. They both got the job done. Um, this one was a little bit easier, but cost a little bit more. So if you're going, uh, if you're going to be doing this a lot, this one. If you want to lend this one to your friends in your ham club and not worry about whether it comes back, this one. They both get the job done. This one was a little bit more fiddly. So there you have it. There is a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.